Finishing med school and starting FY1 is a really exciting time, but speak to anybody and they'll tell you there's a pretty steep learning curve when you first start working as a junior doctor. So we spoke to some FY1s who are currently working for Mid-Yorks and asked them one simple question. What are your top tips for FY1? Here's what they had to say about working on the wards. Um, hi, I'm Ashley. I'm one of the F1s at Mid Yorks. Hi guys, my name's Ryan. I'm one of the F1s at Mid Yorkshire Hospital Trust. Hi, my name's Zahir. Um, I'm an F1 at Mid Yorks. Hi, uh, my name's Eddie. I'm one of the F1s at Ender Mills that uh, you guys will be taking over from. In terms of being organised on the job, it's a bit of a shock to the system. I think starting as an F1, you don't really sort of have any preparation before you do it. You're thrown into the job. Um, having a jobs list is really important so that you can keep up with the patients. Sometimes the ward rounds are really fast. So having a list of jobs um, that you can share out at the end of the ward round so you know what, what you've got to do and you can keep on top of things is really helpful. Be organised. A lot of your job is organising the consultants and the seniors, pointing them to what bay to go to and doing all of the admin. So people who are better organised generally tend to be better F1s. So when it comes to ward rounds and things, each ward works slightly differently. Surgical ones, for instance, here are all on paper. Um, my medical job ward was um, quite a slow ward round, for instance, it took a few hours. But um, you find the system quickly, you find something that works well. If there's two of you on the ward, one of you can be all typing and one of you can do the jobs. If a consultant's asked you to request a scan and you're not 100% sure why we're doing the scan, I would always say clarify with them straight away oh, do you mind telling me exactly why it is we need the scan? Um, just because when you put in the request, if you haven't given a proper history or a proper question, it might get rejected. Make your list, you know, things like investigations and things, if you can get them ordered earlier in the day, then you can have the results by the afternoon to try and do those things before and all your kind of prescriptions and um, discharge letters and things, do them later. Discharge letters, so, I think everybody always goes into a bit too much detail at the start because you don't want to miss anything out, but definitely try and remember that it's just salient points that need to go in the discharge letter. So key bits about the history and examination when they came in, not necessarily throughout their admission, um, uh, unless it's important to the, you know, to the overall diagnosis and just key investigations and then summary of how they were treated and then any follow up that's going to be happening from there. Invest in a pair of really comfy shoes. You're going to be on your feet for a really long time a lot of the day, so it's worth having a really nice pair of comfy shoes. Just play it as safe as you can. Um, as an F1, I think that's the whole point of this year, and it can be scary sometimes. Obviously, there's lots of different personalities working on the wards, um, so just not taking anything personally and questions like ask as many questions as you need to, not being worried about looking stupid and what people are going to say because that's that's kind of what we need to do to be safe. We're not expected to know everything and that's the beauty of being an F1. You can say you don't know and get all the support you need. So definitely recommend always get some support. If you're not sure, get some backup from some seniors and generally people are really happy to give sort of advice. Never be afraid to ask for help. Uh, you will find yourself out of your depth and probably scared at many points throughout the year, but your seniors are there and it's so welcome to just put your hands up and say, I need help, please come and help me. There's never any points or medals for trying to be brave and trying to do it alone. It's, it's dangerous. Just ask for help and people will help. Um, talking to other specialties, something I've found really useful is to get a piece of paper um, and write out the like a summary of the patient history and then a specific question that you're going to be asking the specialty and try and preempt what that specialty you're going to ask you. So if you're call in microbiology for some advice about antibiotics, preempt that they might want to know about as many previous cultures that the patient might have had or any antibiotics that they've been on. So just jot down all of the things that are relevant on a piece of paper so that when they ask you inevitable questions about um, the story, you've hopefully got it all to hand. And then also try and sit by a computer so that if they ask you questions that you haven't been able to preempt, which is going to happen because they're a specialty doctor and we're just enough ones. Um, then you've got it and you can quickly search up without having to take up too much of their time. Help each other out. There will be days that you might find really easy, but your other F1s might have loads of jobs. Always just offer a hand, share the workload out, work as a team and you'll be forever appreciated. So at the end of a shift, 
I really recommend handing everything over and not feeling like you have to stay and obviously if they're sick patients that's different but it can sometimes be difficult to know when you sort of have to finish a shift but otherwise you just get really burnt out so that's what the handovers are there for obviously try not to hand over anything that's too rubbish for a night sort of job or something like that but generally at the end of your shift you should be handing everything over don't feel that you need to stay an exception report when you need to if you, if you are having to stay later from brooches to portfolios to study leave there'll be a lot of demands on your time outside the wards here's what our fy1s had to say about organizing your time as a junior doctor Definitely trying to be as organised as possible. Obviously throughout the year you've got to get lots of different sign-offs, meet up with supervisors and things. It can be difficult to pin down some of them if they're clinical. So getting that all signed off, um, they're quite straightforward to do. So as long as you've got them in the diary, I'd really recommend that. Always check the up-to-date rotors because sometimes midway through a job they'll change the rotor according to you know other people having sick leave or other annual leave or whatever. So they'll be like up-to-date rotors that get released somewhere. So find out where they get released and then check them regularly to make sure that you're going to the right place. Things like taster days, um, if you we, you are entitled to them as F1, so it's really valuable to try and reach out to some of the specialties if you've not got a rotation there to try and spend some time there. Look at things, that, um, for instance, if you can do some teaching or if you can do an audit or if you can do some research, um, look, to, look to seek opportunity because in med school when you're forced to do projects and things, kind of take it for granted but no one's going to force you to do anything during FY1 and it's actually a really good time when you've got time to do things like that. Have a good positive attitude, you will learn so much every single day, uh, consultants, registrars, even your colleagues will pick up if your attitude's really bad um, and you're not that bothered about learning new things, people will be less inclined to, to help you and won't work with you as well. As an F1, it's not always clear what you're entitled to in terms of travel expenses and study leave, so it's worth looking into that. You can get your petrol or if you get public transport to work reimbursed for the whole year, um, so, but you have to submit that all online and we weren't really told about that so it was all kind of through the grapevine, so that's something I definitely recommend getting that in early and it's just something to go towards your travel expenses. Your first year as a doctor can be really intense, which is why our FY1s told us about the importance of maintaining a good work-life balance, including one tip in particular. Uh, another, another piece of really good advice that I was given was um, to book annual leave before you start working. You always try and get your annual leave in nice and early. Definitely things like annual leave, really good to get that in early, especially if you're sort of in a big team of F1s and lots of people wanting to and leave at the same time. If you think of any plans that are coming up or there's any events in F1, you can speak, you'll get emailed by rotor coordinators and things before. If you find out who they are and you book your annual leave before you even start your job and book something for that annual leave, it just means that for the first couple of months, which is always going to be a bit of an emotional roller coaster, that you've got something to look forward to. The worst thing you can do is just, you know, work along on call and think, how long have I got till till I get a break or something. If you've got something to look forward to, like a concert or even going away on holiday or going to see family, um, I would definitely recommend booking that. I just did general surgery and a lot of us left it kind of late and then we were all trying to take leave right at the end. And some of us weren't able to get leave on the exact days that we wanted, so you had to take your leave a bit bitty, like a random Wednesday in the middle of a week, when ideally, if you've got a day, you know, it'd be good to take on a Friday or a Monday to extend your weekend. Work-life balance is really important. I think, especially uh, when you're work when you have a really heavy rotor, uh, which often at Pinterfields we do have quite heavy rotors. Um, it's really important to have good work-life balance. Um, so you know, getting off the ward, especially at lunch um, and having a break, finishing on time, and then doing some fun stuff in the evenings. Uh, don't sort of feel like you need to go back and read up everything when you get home. You just won't have the capacity to, you'll just be so tired. Um, but then once you get into the swing of things, you know, um, you do get used to the, the work shifts. But I really recommend having a life outside of work, it's really important.
you know, spend a lot of time doing your hobbies, have have a release, um, pick up a new hobby. Um, I I have started cycling, which is my thing now. Um, I've become one of those lycra wearing people. So yeah, um, find something new, find something exciting that means that even if even if you're having a rubbish day, you've still got something to look forward to that week as well. Um, another thing that you just enjoy doing just for the sake of enjoying it. Not everything has to be for becoming a better doctor. More than anything, our FY1s wanted to pass on the message that it's going to be a great year, you all have what it takes, and you'll enjoy your first year as a junior doctor. The best bit of advice I can give is it's, it's going to be okay, it's all going to be fine. Um, you will know a lot more than you think. You've gone through five years of medical school for a reason and you'll have gained so much knowledge and so many skills from that. And I'm sure you're all wonderful communicators as well. So when you go and see patients for the first time, it can be a bit daunting. You're putting your name to prescriptions, you're, you're ordering investigations sometimes. Um, it's because you have medical expertise. It's because you have gained the knowledge to be able to do that. And also, if you're ever unsure, there's always so much help. I think everyone remembers what it's like to be an F1, and it's particularly F2s. I found them to be the most helpful, most useful. So don't worry about it at all. I didn't hope I haven't scared you too much. You should be really excited. It is, it is hard, but it is really fun. You meet lots of new people. The mess is amazing, plug and you will have a great time and learn so much and it's really, really great. So do be excited. So above all else, good luck with it. It's, it's tough getting started. There's a lot of things that you find difficult at the start, but um, you get better every single day and you'll notice an improvement every single day as you get used to doing the things that you found difficult and they become easy. And then eventually just, you, yeah, you just keep improving and it's, it's a good year, it's a good job. There are things that you won't, won't have prepared for, there are things that you won't know, but it's part of the fun of the job is it's we're constantly learning. You're in a training position, F1 is not just being a doctor, it is training to be a doctor. So you've got pl there, there will be plenty to learn. But overall, you're gonna have a brilliant year. It's so fun to be an F1. Obviously there's challenges and there's days where you feel exhausted or you've seen some rubbish stuff on the ward but generally you have a lot of other F1s around you it's really sociable um, there's a great mess so definitely make the most of that um, and yeah just try not to worry too much about things F1 is there to just as a year to learn you're not expected to go above and beyond um, if you don't feel like you're able to so yeah just have a great year and it's, it's a great hospital to be at and yeah enjoy it <laughs>